Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Decora High School Softball Diamond in a Northeast Iowa Conference doubleheader tonight. Tonight it is the Decora Vikings coming in with a record of 1-4 and four overall, 1-3 and three in conference play. They will take on the O-Wine Huskies with a record of 0-6 oh and six overall and 0-2 oh and two in conference play. We're about ready to get things underway, and here is your Husky lineup. The lineup that will face uh, right-hander Annika Vanderkrull for Decora. Leading off in center field, Kimber Dayton. Batting second at third base, Heidi Cole. Hitting third, the catcher, Natalie McMillan. Batting fourth, the pitcher, Ashley Rosensteel. Hitting fifth in right field, Mary McDonough. Hitting sixth at shortstop, Amber Rosensteel. Hitting seventh at first base, Nicole Bergen. Batting eighth in left field, Michaela Rael. And batting ninth will be the designated player, Kennedy Adams. Adams will bat for the shortstop, Peyton Lawless. And that lineup will face junior right-hander Annika Vanderkroll for Decora. And we'll set the Decora defense here momentarily as well. It's turned into a, a bit of a cloudy, overcast night. There is some uh, rain on the radar, but hopefully we can get 14 innings of softball in before anything uh, happens here. Vanderkroll is 0-2 on the season with a 7-point ERA. Opponents hitting 3-11 against her. Making her third start of the season, 20 innings, 28 hits, 20 earned run. Six walks and three strikeouts. As Kimber Dayton bats from the left-hand side against Annika Vanderkroll, and the slap hitter will swing through the first offering from Vanderkroll, and it snowballs and one strike. Maddie Eady is in left. Chelsea Twait in center, and Riley Hubka in right. Jenna Iverson at third, Peyton Jurlett at short. 0-1 delivery, low and outside, 4-1 ball, 1 strike. Maria Hoime at second, and Tess Olinger at first. Behind the plate is Cassie Hoime, and in the circle is Annika Vandekrol. 1-1 one one on Dayton in the pitch, slap bunt right back to the circle. Vandekrol picks it up and throws on to Olinger at first base, and Dayton retired 1-3, one, 1 down here in the first inning. 1 down, nobody on for Heidi Kolb. Just underway, no score in this conference. Doubleheader call, off to a four for 17 start with a double and no RBI. First pitch taken low from Vanderkroll. One ball, no strikes. The Vikes got their first conference win last week in game two of the doubleheader against New Hampton. They went to Cresco on Tuesday night, had a lead going into the bottom of the seventh in game one as that one smacked toward short backhand. Stop made by Jurlich. She'll throw on to first base. Nice stretch by Tess Olinger. And quickly two up, two down here in the first inning. Nice play by Jurlett at short. The freshman for Decora. So two down, nobody on for Natalie McMillan. Off to a six for 16 start with a double and four RBI. The four RBI is tied for the team lead to this point as pitch goes high. It is one ball, no strikes. Vandekrill already, 1-0 offering. Swung on and missed. As McMillan out in front of the off-speed offering from Vandekrill, and it's one ball, one strike. Annika ready in the 1-1. Swung on and missed. McMillan tried to wait back, but waited too long. And it's one ball and two strikes. Vikes 1-1 one one at home this year. And 0-3 on the road, the 1-2 delivery, changeup taken low. It's two balls, two strikes the count. A couple of ground outs, retired the first two batters here in the top of the first inning. And Vandercrow looking for an easy inning here for the first one. Pitch swung on and missed as McMillan out in front of another offering from Vandercrow and an easy first inning for Decora defensively. Three up, three down. We head to the bottom of the first inning. It's 0-1, nothing in Decora coming to bat, and the Vikings will bat this way. Leading off at first base will be Tess Olinger. Batting second, the shortstop, Peyton Jurlett. Hitting third at second base is Maria Hoime. Batting fourth in center field, Chelsea Twait. Hitting fifth, the catcher, Cassie Hoime. Hitting sixth at third base, Jenna Iverson. 
Batting seventh in left field, Matty Eady. Hitting eighth, the designated player, Leighton Eady. Batting ninth in right field is Riley Hubkin. That lineup will face Ashley Rosensteel for O-Wine. Rosensteel making her sixth start, her eighth appearance. She's 0-5 with a 4.30 ERA. Opponents hitting 3.19 against her, 27 and two-thirds innings. 37 hits, 40 runs, but only 17 of them have been earned. 17 walks and 21 strikeouts. We haven't introduced our umpires yet tonight. Kerry Griffith calling the balls and strikes, and Randy Morris working at the base pass. We're playing their third and fourth games of the week. As we mentioned, they lost uh, both ends of a doubleheader. Over at Crestwood on Tuesday night. Had a lead going to the bottom of the seventh. Crestwood came back and scored a couple. Decorah got one in the top of the eighth, but Crestwood came back with a grand slam at the bottom of the eighth to get the victory. And the Cadets also took game two of the doubleheader by an 11 to 5 margin. Tess Olinger will start things here in the bottom of the first inning against Ashley Rosensteel. Tess off for, to a four for 17 starts with no extra base hits or RBIs. Pitch swung on and missed on the first offering to Olinger. And it's no balls, one strike. Michaela Rael in left, Kimber Dayton in center, and Mary McDonough in right for a line. Heidi Call up at third, Amber Rosensteel at short. Off speed offering taken outside, one ball, one strike. Peyton Lawless at second, Nicole Bergen at first, Natalie McMillan behind the plate. And Ashley Rosensteel in the circle. Here's Looper down the first baseline. It lands foul just to the right of the chalk and just onto the outfield grass in front of us on the first base side. So it's one and two on Tess Olinger. One, two. Swing and a foul back to the screen, so we'll do it again at one ball, two strikes. Vikes will be off after tonight until... Monday night, when they'll host the walk-on Indians. We'll have that for you on the radio as well. We'll have the game after that on the radio as well, uh, down at Waverly next Wednesday night. One ball, two strikes, and the pitch to Olinger, Olinger swung on and missed. He got by the catcher, McMillan, throwing on to first base, and is dropped there by Bergen. So, Olinger strikes out but reaches first. We'll give an error to the first baseman, Bergen, had she made the catch it would have been an out at first base but she failed to do so and Jurlid will bat from the left hand side being the slap hitter and Jurlid bunts up the third base side picked up there by Kolb throws on to first base and Bergen covers the bag sacrifice complete 5-3 so Olin removes to second base with one down for Maria Hoimi no score, bottom half of the first inning. First of two in a conference doubleheader tonight here in Decorah. Hoimi, four for 16. She is the team leader in RBI with five to this point. Has another RBI opportunity here as the pitch is strike, nothing in one. Rosensteel ready, pitch looped foul up the first base side, not a play. So Rosensteel ahead of Hoimi. No balls, two strikes. Owine looking for their first win of the season. Coro looking for wins two and three here tonight. 0 2 delivery, changeup taken on the outside edge for strike three. So a good morning, good afternoon, and good night to Maria Hoimi. Runner at second, two down for Chelsea Twaite. Twaite had a home run the other night in Cresco. She's off to a four for 15 start, has a triple, a home run, and two RBIs. She'll look at a strike at the letters, no balls, one strike. Olinger reached by striking out, but reaching on a drop at first base by Bergen. She was sacrificed to second, Hoimi then struck out as Chelsea takes the next one low, one ball, one strike. Rosen Steele ready to go. 
And the 1-1 offering swung on and missed. Some good heat from Rosensteel. A riser that Twait couldn't catch up to, and it's one ball, two strikes. Rosen still ready, one, two, swung on, popped up straight back. The catcher, McMillan, is under it, and she drops it right near the left-hand batter's box. So new life for Chelsea Twait. We'll see if she can't take advantage of it. One ball, two strikes. Olinger, the runner at second with two down here in the bottom of the first inning. Huskies went down. In order in the top half of the inning as that one popped up right field side angling into foul ground is Mary McDonough. She can't quite get there, so Twait stays alive with another two-strike foul ball. Olinger, again the runner at second base. Rosen still ready in the O. Or the one-two swung on and missed. Rosen Steele with a couple of strikeouts here in the first inning. No runs, no hits, one error, one left. We head to the top half of the second inning. We are scoreless. Top of the second inning we go. It's a scoreless game between Decor and Owine here on a Thursday night. First of a doubleheader. It was a sunny day most of the day, but the sky's starting to cloud up. For the photogenic Randy Iverson, the cloudy sky is probably uh, great to shoot pictures in. That's awesome, Darren. It'll be middle third of the order for the Huskies uh, here in the second inning. Amber Rosensteel, Mary McDonough, and or rather Ashley Rosensteel, Mary McDonough, and Amber Rosensteel. Cora still without a, a couple of players. The Gora girls soccer team going to be in a regional final on Monday night taking on Waverly Show Rock. In fact, if you tune to the Friday Sports Show tomorrow morning, we'll have Kerry Jorgensen, the head girls soccer coach, on as a guest as Ashley Rosensteel will look at a strike from Vandercrill to start things here in the second inning. Rosensteel off to a good start with the stick. The 0-1 delivery sails high. It is one ball, one strike. Ashley, 10 for 14, calculating out to 7-14 with two doubles, one triple, and four RBI. The four RBI is tied for the team lead as the pitch in there for a strike. And it's one ball, two strikes now. McDonough and Amber Rosenstiel to follow here in the top of the second inning. These two teams will meet again on the 18th of this month. 1-2 delivery, hammered towards left field, retreating as Maddie Eady lunges up, can't get there, and Rosensteel will have a stand-up double to start things here in the second. <laughs> Ashley Rosensteel with her third double of the season. A runner at second, nobody out, and Mary McDonough will be the batter. McDonough, two for 12 with two RBI on the campaign. Just an eighth grader. Pitch taken low. What is one ball, no strikes? In fact, uh, three eighth graders in the lineup for the Huskies. The 1 0 swung on and missed. One ball, one strike. Amber Rosensteel in the on deck circle, another eighth grader. One ball, one strike to count. Runner at second, nobody out. And the pitch inside for two balls, one strike. The Ashley Rosen steal double a moment ago, the first hit of the game. Amber Rosen steal in the on deck circle, two balls, one strike, and the pitch low and outside from Vandercrow, and it's three balls, one strike now. No score, top half the second inning. 3-1 delivery, high and tight for ball four. So the Huskies have gotten their first two runners on in the second inning. And Amber Rosensteel will be the batter. 
Amber is three for 16 with an RBI to start the season. The pitch swung on, a roller toward short. Peyton Gerlitt will have one play, it'll be to first, and Amber Rosensteel retired by her opposing shortstop as Ashley moves to third and Mary McDonough to second on the play. So second and third with one down for Nicole Bergen. The Huskies get the first real scoring chance of this game. Bergen is three for 19 with three RBI to this point. Pitch. Swung on, popped up, straight back. Cassie Hoime is retreating, and she will make the catch near the backstop. And that'll be the second out of the inning. So a big out there as Bergen retired on the first pitch of the at-bat. Second and third with two down for Michaela Riel. Riel will look at the first one low, one ball, no strikes. Rael, the junior, one for 12 to start the season. She does have an RBI. Amanda Crow ready, 1-0, swinging a foul back. One ball, one strike. No score here in the top of the second inning. This is a conference doubleheader between Decora and Owine tonight. We're glad you're with us. Vandekroll kicks and deals, and the 1-1 one, one low and inside. Cassie moved to her left to stop the pitch in the dirt, and it's two balls and one strike. Two one, swung on a ground ball to the right side. Maria Hoyme picks it up onto Olinger at first, and the Vikes get out of the threat here in the second inning. One hit. Two left, bottom of the second we go. It is a scoreless game between Decor and Owat. Bottom of the second inning, no score between Decor and Owine. By the way, tomorrow morning, you can tune into the Friday Sports Show on AM 1240 KDEC at 825. As we mentioned, we'll have Decor girls soccer coach Kerry Jorgensen on. We'll preview the regional final coming up on Monday night as the Decor girls will take on Waverly Show Rock. Down at Waverly, second year in a row, the soccer program has reached the regional final. And we'll also have Dennis Schult on. Dennis Schult is an Upper Iowa Conference historian, and he'll talk about the life and times of Jack Dittmer. Graduate of Elkater Central. He was a nine-time letter winner at the University of Iowa and also played in the Milwaukee Braves organization. Uh, Jack passed away this week and we'll discuss his life and times with Dennis Schultz. That'll be tomorrow morning on the Friday Sports Show at 825 from AM 1240 KDC. Cassie Hoime starts things here in the second. No score between Decora and Owine. Cassie looks at the first one inside corner for a strike. It's nothing and one. Cassie two for 15 with a double, a triple, and two RBI to start the season. Bikes had a runner at second with nobody out in the first inning as a riser swung out and missed, and it's nothing and two. But a couple of strikeouts got Owine out of the threat. Owine. Had a second and third one out situation, a first and second nobody out situation. Next one high to Hoime. But the Vikes were able to pitch their way out of that. Cassie will be followed by Jenna Iverson and Maddie Eady here in the second inning. One, two, riser well high. So it's two balls, two strikes. Owine will play at the North Fayette Tournament this weekend. Pitch swung out and missed, so three straight strikeouts for Ashley Rosensteel. So one down, nobody on for Jenna Iverson. No score here in the second. Jenna off to a one for 11 start with two RBI. Pitch in there for a strike, nothing in one.
Rosen Steele has caught her groove, and really, as the pitch goes high, one ball, one strike, has started the game well. The only base runner Decora has had was a strikeout and a reach on an error. One ball, one strike to count in the pitch. High and tight to Jenna Iverson. It is two balls, one strike. One will play Starmont, North Fayette Valley, Ed Coe, and Dyer's Bill Beckman over the next few days. The pitch swing and a foul, third base side, not a play. So it's two balls and two strikes. Decora, as we mentioned, will get back into action Monday night, hosting Walk On. Decora's first tournament will be the Jessup Tournament coming up next weekend. 2 2, swung on, smacked in the left center field. That'll land for a base hit. Iverson on with a one out single here in the second inning, the first safety of the day for Decora. Off speed pitch, doing a good job taking that thing the other way. And Iverson will run at first base. And Maddie Eady will be the batter. Maddie off to a 5 for 15 start, swinging a foul away. No balls, one strike. She has a double and four RBI. She's second on the squad in that category. No balls, one strike on Maddie Eady. Rosen Steele ready 0-1, bunt it up the third base side. A nice one, bare hand pickup by Kolb, throws on to first base, and the throw hit Edey in the helmet softly. It caroms away from the second baseman, Lawless, who was covering, and Iverson will move to third. We'll give Edey a bunt single on that because the throw did beat her, and Iverson will advance to third on the throwing error. So two errors in the first two innings for a wine. And Leighton Eady will bat with an RBI opportunity. No score here in the second. Leighton is two for six. Good opportunity here for her first varsity RBI. First pitch to Leighton. Swung on, popped up on the infield. Underneath it is Lawless at second base, and she will make the catch for the second out of the inning. So big out there as Eady pops out, and Riley Hubka... We'll try to come up with a two-out hit for Decora. Riley, one for nine to start the season. First pitch high from Rosen Steele. One ball and no strikes. So two hits here in the inning and one error in the inning. O'Wine left two in the top half of the frame. And O'Wine trying to return the favor defensively to Decora. Pitch outside edge for a strike as... Maddie Eady takes off and will steal second uncontested. So two runners in scoring position here for Hubka. One ball, one strike, the count. The 1-1, one, one, swing on and looped foul back to the screen. It hit the top of the back, stop, and caroms into the bleachers directly behind home plate. It is one and two. Rosen Steele trying to pitch out of the Vikes' best scoring chance in the first two frames. 1-2. Swung on and rolled foul up the third base side. Coach Terry Olson will retrieve in the third base coach's box. And the count remains. One ball, two strikes. Second and third. Two down. Second inning. No score. 1-2, swing and a miss at a rise ball, and that's that for the second inning. Two hits, one error, two left. We head to the third, we're scoreless. No score, both teams had a pretty good scoring chance. In the second inning, and both teams... Ended up leaving two runners on. It'll be 9 1 and 2 in the third inning for Owine. Kennedy Adams, Kimber Dayton, and Heidi Cole. In between games tonight, they are going to dedicate the new dugouts here. 
Renovation project took place this spring. Both the home and away dugouts with a massive upgrade here at the Decorah High School softball diamond. The Decorah Parks and Recreation Department, Decorah Viking Athletic Booster Club, Finhold Construction, Wicks Construction, all a part of it. Kennedy Adams will start things here in the third. And she'll look at the first one low from Vandercroll, who struck out one. And walked one and give it up one hit through her two to this point. Adams with her first at bat of the season. Pitch swung on and foul at the plate. One ball, one strike. And a curl ready, and the pitch blowing in. Two balls, one strike. Top of the order, and Kimber Dayton on deck. No score here in the third inning as that one rolled towards short. Glove there by Peyton Jurlett on to Tess Olinger at first base, and one down here in the third. Vandercroll has been able to retire the first batter in two of the three innings thus far. And Kimber Dayton will start the second trip around the batting order. Dayton grounded back to the pitcher in the first inning, 0 for 1. Pitch inside is one ball, no strikes. Both teams have gotten one runner to third base. They have gotten them no further. The 1-0 looped up the first base side over the head of Olinger and foul. It's one ball and one strike. One and one the count. Vandercrow ready. Change up taken low. Two balls, one strike on Kimber Dayton, and one of three eighth graders starting for the Huskies. Two one, that one caught the front knee, and it's taken for strike two. So now it's two and two on Amber Dayton. No score here in the third inning. Conference softball tonight from Decora. 2-2 delivery, ground ball to the right side, picked up there by Hoimey. On to first base and Olinger, and two up, two down here in the third. So of the eight outs that have been recorded to this point, six of them have been on the ground. Up next for baseman Heidi Kolb. Two down for Heidi Kolb. Grounded to short in the first inning, 0 for 1. Ground ball to the right side, picked up there by Hoimey. On to Olinger at first base and a three up, three down inning here in the third for Owine. Three up, three down. We head to the bottom of the third. It is Decorah nothing and Owine nothing. Bottom of the third we go. Good time to check the upcoming schedule. Tomorrow night we'll have Decorah Viking baseball on the air. The Vikings will travel to Crestwood to take on the Cadets. It'll be a conference doubleheader beginning at 5.30 on AM 1240 KDEC and at KDECradio.net. We'll have softball on the air on Monday night. Decorah and walk on at 7.20. Bottom of the second or bottom of the third inning we go. And Tess Olinger will be the batter. She struck out but reached on an error in the first inning. She swings and misses at the first offering from Rosensteel. No balls, one strike. Next one popped up right side, retreating at second base is Peyton Lawless, and she bobbles but makes the catch. Perhaps a bit more adventure than Owine wanted in that play, but one down here in the third. And Peyton Jurlid will stand in. Sacrificed only her to second in the first, so no official at bat yet for Jurlid. As the pitch... On the outside edge for a strike, nothing in one. Softball team has been doing a raffle for cash prizes. They'll be giving those away 
in between games. 0-1, swing and a foul back. And it snowballs two strikes on Peyton Gerlin. One down, nobody on here in the third. Scoreless game to Cora and Owine. Sun starting to play peekaboo with the clouds once again as the pitch goes outside to Gerlin. It is one ball and two strikes. One, two. Swinging a foul back to the screen on a slap hit attempt by Gerlin. So we'll do it again at one ball, two strikes. One, two. Ground ball to the right side, and it gets through into right center for a base hit. Third hit thus far for Decora. Lawless went to her left, and the ball carom to her right at second base, and drill it on with a one-out single here in the third. The batter will be Maria Hoime, who struck out looking in the first 0 for 1. Pitch taken low, one ball, no strikes. No score to Cora and Owine here in the third. Series of signs from Coach Olson in the third base box. The 1-0 delivery pitch taken low. Runner goes throw down to second base is not in time. So Jurlid with a stolen base and a two ball no strike count on Maria Hoime. Maria is the team leader in RBI to this point. She has five. Another runner in scoring position and less than two out opportunity for the Coraz. The pitch outside from Rosensteel. It is three balls, no strikes now. 3-0 in there for a strike. It's three and one. As Hoimi was taken all the way. Three balls, one strike. A runner at second and one down. Pitch swung on and missed. Some heat on the outside edge and Maria couldn't catch up to it. It's three balls, two strikes. Chelsea Twait will follow here in the third. Rosensteel ready, 3-2, swinging a foul. Right side and out of play. So it's three balls, two strikes yet on Maria Hoime. Home plate umpire Kerry Griffith goes to the ball return on the third base side. Dandy little contraption invented. 3-2, well high for ball four. So for the second consecutive inning, Decora has multiple runners on, first and second with one down. They couldn't make anything work out of this in the second inning. Chelsea Twait will try to end that trend here in the third. Twait struck out swinging the first 0 for 1 as the pitch goes high from Rosensteel. One ball, no strikes. one 0 Bunted, third base side, that one will roll foul. Just enough top spin on it. For it to roll foul as Rosen steal the pitcher and McMillan the catcher wise enough to stay away from it. A ball and a strike, first and second, one down. Decora 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position thus far. Pitch swung out and missed. Rosen steal with some heat. And it's one ball, two strikes. One, two delivery. Rising high. It's two balls, two strikes. Sherwood. At second, and Maria Hoime at first. Twade had a home run in game one of the doubleheader over at Cresco the other night. Pitch 
Just missed the inside edge. It's three balls, two strikes now. Three two delivery. Swung on, popped up. Left side retreating a step onto the outfield grass. It's a drop at uh, shortstop. I do not know if the infield fly was called. It was. Chelsea Twait should be retired on the infield fly. And the runners can move up on their own discretion. Jurlid will be at third and Hoime will be at second. Coach Terry Olson will talk to base umpire Randy Morris and discuss whether the infield fly rule should have been called. The infield fly rule was called, so Twait will be retired. And once that happens, the runners can move up on their own discretion and... Jurlid will end up being at third. Hoime will be at second. And Cassie Hoime will be the batter. So two down, runners at second and third. And the batter will be Cassie Hoime. It's always a confusing situation when the infield fly is called and the defensive player does not make the catch. But it was handled well and cold correctly by the umpire and crew. Because once the infield fly is called, the runners can move up at their own risk. And Decora did move up 60 feet with Jurlin moving it to third and Maria Hoime moving to second. And the batter will be Cassie Hoime. And now there's a discrepancy on the lineup card or the scorecard as Barb Bennett, Terry Olson, and the home plate umpire Kerry Griffith having discussion near the O-line third base dugout. It'll go as an error on the shortstop Rosensteel to allow the runners to move up had she made the catch. The runners would not have moved up, so the extra 60 feet for both runners. Was called. And the rule related to the infield fly is that an infielder could make a catch with reasonable effort. And that was definitely a case there. Sometimes there's a little bit of Confusion whether the infielder has to be under the ball or not. And the shortstop, Rosensteel, did have her back to the infield, but she could have made the play with reasonable effort. That's why the infield fly rule was called. And we proceed now as Cassie Hoime looks at a strike, nothing and one. Hoime struck out swinging the second, second and third. With two down here in the third, out of all that, it is a scoreless game. Pitch outside, one ball, one strike on Cassie. Decora 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position to this point in the game. Cassie Hoime trying to end that trend. 1-1. One, one. Hoime semi-squared to bunt and bunts it foul, so it's one ball, two strikes now. As Owine trying to get out of their second consecutive jam in as many innings. One and two, the count with two down. Rosen Steele ready in the one two offering is taken low, so it is two balls, two strikes on Cassie Hoime. Deuce is definitely wild. Two and two with two down and two on in a scoreless game here in the third. 2-2 delivery, swung on and missed. Rosensteel with the strikeout of Hoime. And that's that for the third. No runs, one hit, one error, two left. We head to the fourth inning. It is Decora nothing and Owai nothing. Top of the fourth inning we go. It's a scoreless game between Decora and Owai. 
Glad you're with us on a Thursday night here in Decora. Darren Swenson with you for Northeast Iowa Conference softball. These, we didn't really have time to give you a in-depth inning. Top of the fourth inning we go. Again, we'll have baseball tomorrow night at Crestwood. 5.20 the start time. On AM 1240 KDC softball Monday night to Goran walk on at 7.15. Ground ball towards short off the bat of Natalie McMillan. It's picked up there by Jurlid who fires across to Tess Olinger. And there is one down here in the second inning. And the O-line batter with the only hit to this point in the game, Ashley, Ashley Rosensteel. Will stand in. She doubled the left in the second. Pitch swung on, popped up, foul. Third base side and out of play. Out on to Goose Island Drive. No balls, one strike. Three hits for Decora, one hit for O-line. Decora has played errorless softball. And... O-line has committed three errors. Pitch swung on, popped up left side. Angling into left center is Chelsea Twait, and she'll make a two-handed catch in medium depth left center for the second out of the inning. Two down, nobody on. Mary McDonough will be the batter. She drew a walk in the second inning. In fact, the second inning is the only inning to this point that O-line has had their... A base runner on. That one through the legs of Iverson. Karams into left center field and reaching with two outs will be Mary McDonough on Decora's first defensive miscue. Iverson with the error at third. Runner at first, two down, and Amber Rosensteel will be the batter. Runner at first, two down. Rosensteel grounded to short in the second 0 for 1. Rosen still swings and grounds one toward short. Deep in the hole as Peyton Jurley picks it up, throws to first base, beating it out is Rosensteel. McDonough moves to second on the play. She'll be there with two down. So first and second, two down. Peyton did all she could on that play. And unfortunately, she couldn't get the throw across the diamond in time. And the batter will be Nicole Bergen, who fouled out to the catcher in the second 0 for 1. No score here in the fourth. Pitch low and in from Vandercroll. One ball, no strikes. one -oh. Pitch low. Two balls, no strikes. Huskies trying to take advantage of the extra out the Vikings gave them in this frame. Vandercroll ready, 2-0. A little bit low once again. It is three balls and no strikes now. Three and oh the count and the pitch taking all the way is Bergen and she'll take a strike at three and one. The runner at second, McDonough. The runner at first is Rosensteel. Pair of eighth graders out there on the base pass for Owine. Next offering outside from Vandercroll. She'll walk her second. And the bases will be loaded here in the fourth inning. Base is loaded, two down, and Michaela Rael will be the batter. She grounded a second to end the second 0 for 1. Vandercroll delivers, pitch swung on, popped up into left field. Maddie Eady is under it, and she will make the catch to retire the side. No runs, one hit, 
One error and the bases left loaded. We're halfway home in game one of this Northeast Iowa Conference doubleheader. It is Decorah nothing and Owain nothing. Both teams have threatened. Neither team has scored as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Decorah looking for win number two of the season. Owain looking for win number one of the season. Hitters 6, 7, and 8 are due in the Decorah lineup. It'll be Jenna Iverson, Maddie Eady, and Leighton Eady. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning. As the electric personality of Adam Riley add something to the festivities here. Pitch in there for a strike to Iverson. Nothing and one. Iverson with one of the three hits for Decora to this point. Uh, single to left back in the second inning. Vikes have had multiple runners on in the last two frames, but haven't been able to score from that. Retreating at first base on a foul ball is Bergen. She will make the catch a step into foul ground halfway between the bag and the outfield grass, and there's one down here in the fourth inning. So with the number of base runners you've had, it's tough to call this one a pitcher's duel, but you almost have to call it that way because there's no runs on the board as Matty Eady swings and fouls the pitch back. No balls, one strike. Eady had a bunt single back in the second inning. First of a conference doubleheader tonight here in Decorah. No balls, one strike, and the pitch a little bit low. It is one and one the count. One one from Rosen Steele, swinging a foul back. It is one and two. Rosensteel's given up the three hits. She's also walked one. Her defense hasn't been too nice to her as she has given up three errors to this point. One, two, a little bit low. Two balls, two strikes on number two. Owine has retired the leadoff batter in three of the four innings. The only time that the Vikes have gotten a leadoff runner on. It was a strikeout and an error. Here's a base hit in the center field. As Matty Ely able to loop one in front of Kimber Dayton out in center. So for the third consecutive inning, the Vikes get a one-out single. Runner at first, one down for Leighton Eady. Scoreless game here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Leighton popped a second in the second, 0 for 1. Pitch, little low, runner goes. Throw down to second base it is not in time. Maddie Eady with the steal of second. And it's one ball, no strikes. So late and Eady with a runner in scoring position. She'll swing and foul the next one back. It is one ball, one strike. Decora again struggling with runners in scoring position tonight. They are 0 for 6. So they've had their opportunities. They haven't been able to convert. One ball, one strike. The count the pitch taken low from Rosensteel. Two balls, one strike. Decora out hitting O-Wine 4 to 3. O-Wine out erring Decora 3 to 1. But in the stat that counts, it's a couple of goose eggs to this point. Two balls, one strike, Rosensteel delivers, pitch high, caroms off the glove of McMillan, so on the pass ball, Edie will move up 60 to third. Two balls, one strike, the count. Riley Hubko waiting her turn in the on-deck circle. Two 
Two and one to late needy in the pitch. A little low again. Three balls and one strike, or rather, I was a pitch behind. That pitch was low for ball four. So runners at the corners and one down. Of course, the first and third situation gives Decora a few options here. Infield coming up for Owine. Riley Hupka will be the batter. She bunts up the third base side, but foul. No balls, one strike. No score here in at the fourth inning. Pitch, outside corner for a strike, and it's nothing in two. Hubka trying to avoid going 0 for 2. Pitch, caroms away from the catcher. McMillan moving up to second on the play is Edie, but Maddie Edie with the play in front of her. Didn't get a good lead off of third base and decided not to take the risk. So second and third and a one and two count now on Riley Hupka. One ball, two strikes. Rosensteel delivers. Pitch swung on towards short. It's picked up there at short by Rosensteel. Throws on to first base. Hupka beat it out. Maddie Eady moves to third to home. Leighton Eady moves to third. And it is a one to nothing lead for Decora. So Riley Hubka with an RBI single. There was a bit of a hesitation by Amber Rosensteel at short. And that hesitation perhaps allowed Riley to reach first base. She gets her first RBI of the season right there. And Tess Olinger will try to add to the fun. She'll bat for the third time as that caroms away from the catcher. McMillan down the line from third comes late. Needy, she will score. Moving all the way to third on the play is Riley Hubka. It's 2 0 Decora. So on the wild pitch, Late Needy scores, and Riley Hupka moves from second to third after initially advancing one base on the wild pitch. And Barb Bennett out to talk to her infield and battery. It'll be a 1-0 count on Tess Olinger. Olinger struck out but reached on an error in the first, popped to second in the third. So Decora with a 2-0 advantage. RBI infield single by Riley Hopka and a wild pitch scoring the second run. And Olinger will bat, still only one out in the inning. Jenna Iverson fouled the first pitch out to Bergen at first, then Edie a single, late and Edie a walk, Hopka a single to score one on the infield. A wild pitch scores the second run. And Olinger with a 1-0 count on her. 1-0. Taken low. It is two balls, no strikes. Two zero. Olinger bunts up the third base side, squeezes on. Hupka now in a rundown. They throw back to the plate, not in time. Olinger goes to second base, and the throw there is all the way into center field. Olinger hits third. She will score, and Decora will have a 4 to nothing lead. Crazy play there. Olinger bunted. Hubka took off on contact. It was picked up at third by Kolb. She threw to the plate to McMillan, who threw back to Kolb. By the time Kolb's return throw hit the plate, Hubka was able to score. Olinger was trying to advance to second. McMillan's throw to second. And Kimber Dayton, the center fielder who was covering second, went into center field, so nobody was backing up that throw. And Olinger easily scored from first. Slap attempt, fielded at third by Kolb. She'll throw on to first base to retire Jurlid for the second out of the inning. So four in 
Base is empty, two down here in the fourth inning. Maria Hoime will be the batter. 4-0 to Cora here in the bottom of the fourth. Hoime looks at the first one high, one ball, new strikes. Hoime struck out looking in the first inning, walked in the third. Pitch ground ball to the right side, backhand stop, made at first base by Bergen, but nobody was covering the bag, so Hoime will reach first base with a two-out single. So four hits in the inning for Decora, and now seven on the night for the Vikings. And Chelsea Twait will be the batter. 4 nothing lead for Decora. Twait, 0 for 2. She'll look at a strike, nothing and one. Twait struck out swinging the first and popped a short in the third. 0-1. Oh, Swung on and a ground ball towards short. Rosensteel makes the play on to first base in Bergen, and Twait retired. But not before the Vikes able to score four on four hits. One error, one left. We head to the fifth. It is Decora leading O-Wine by a 4 to nothing margin. A four-run fourth for Decora. And the Vikings lead it by a 4 to nothing margin. An RBI single by Riley Hubko. Wild pitch scored late in Edie. Riley Hubka able to score on a bunt attempt by Tess Olinger and through a sequence of events, Olinger, who bunted the ball about 20 feet, ends up circling the base pass. Four nothing as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Kennedy Adams, Kimber Dayton, Heidi Kolb here in the fifth inning. For the Huskies to face Annika Vandekrol, who's given up two hits, walked two, struck out one. Decora's played pretty good defense with one error and four innings against. The Huskies, Adams grounded to shorter first time up and looks at the first one low, one ball, no strikes. one -oh. taken for a strike, it's one ball, one strike. Jen Bissell from Decorah Newspapers up here in the booth, she'll do the play-by-play -play in the bottom of the fifth, I'll take pictures. Please? <laughs> The listening audience wants that. One ball, one strike. The pitch goes low. Two balls and one strike the count. Kimber Dayton and Heidi Kolb here in the fifth inning. Vandercroll ready. 2-1. Swing and a miss, and it's 2-2. Two and two. So Vandercroll, who's pretty good at keeping that ball right around the zone. And with the way is playing defense here in game number one, that's pretty much all she needs to do because when your offense helps you out to the tune of four runs, that always helps as that one rolled in there to Adams. Three balls, two strikes. Four spot in the fourth for Decora, and they lead it 4 0. Vandercroll ready, 3 2 offering. Swung on and missed as Adams tried to wait back but waited too long, and Vandercroll gets her second strikeout. One down, nobody on for Kimber Dayton starting the third trip around the batting order for Owine. Dayton grounded to the pitcher in the first, grounded to second in the third. Pitch taken low as Dayton squared the button, pulled the bat back. As we've mentioned, Dayton, one of three eighth graders in the O line lineup. Five nothing, or a four nothing lead here in the fifth for Decora. Barb Bennett with a brief offensive timeout to talk to Dayton. Dayton will square the bunt. Infield coming up for the course. She'll pull the bat back. Round one towards short. Bobbled there by Jurlett, and Dayton going to be safe. Second error of the night for Decora. 
both on the left side of the infield. So one on, one out, and Heidi Kolb for a wine. Grounded to short in the first, grounded to second in the third. Pitch bunted up the third base side. Here is Iverson throwing to first base with Maria Hoime covering. Sacrifice good 5-4. So Kolb advances the runner. Dayton will be there with two down. And Natalie McMillan will have an RBI opportunity for a wine. McMillan struck out swinging in the first inning and grounded to short in the fourth. Huskies left them loaded in that fourth inning. As the pitch goes low, it gets by Cassie Hoime. So moving up to third will be Kimber Dayton on the wild pitch. DeCora with a four spot in the fourth inning. Vandercrow already pitch swung on, popped up foul, and out of play. One ball, one strike to count. One one. Swung on and missed. Good movement on the next and offering from Vandercrow. And it is one ball and two strikes. Runner at third, two down here in the fifth. Decora leading by a 4 nothing margin. 1-2. Swung on a ground ball toward short fielded there by Jurlich. She'll bobble. And reaching first is McMillan. Dayton will score on the play. O-Wine on the board. They trail it 4-1. DeCora gives Owine five outs in the frame, and Vandekroll gives up her first run, albeit an unearned, an unearned run. So runner at first, two down. And the batter will be Ashley Rosensteel, a double left in the second, a fly out to center in the fourth. Runner goes, pitch out of the zone, throw down to second base, not in time. Natalie McMillan with the stolen base. So Rosensteel... The best hitter average-wise coming in for the Huskies now has a runner in scoring position. Rosen Steele, the co-leader in RBI with four to this point in the season for the Huskies. And a changeup taken for a strike. It's one and one. Huskies get their first run with two outs. Vandercroll ready, 1-1 one, one offering, hammered towards left and a base hit. McMillan rounding third, coming to the plate, throw to the plate, not in time as the throw goes through. Rosensteel moves to second, and the quarter lead is cut in half. Ashley Rosensteel has helped her own cause with the stick. As she is two for three with an RBI, and she knocks in her fifth run of the season. Mary McDonough will bat for Owine. Owine's McDonough has been on base twice, walking in the second and reaching on an error in the fourth. And the pitch inside, one ball, no strikes. So Owine has rallied back with the two spots so far here in the fifth after giving up four to the corner in the bottom of the fourth. Pitch swing and a pop-up foul straight back and out of play. And it's one and one on the eighth grader McDonough. One and one the count. Pitch swung on, hit towards center, and threw for a base hit. Rounding third, coming to the plate is Rosensteel. She will score without a play. Three two-out runs, all unearned here in the fifth for Owine. It's a 4-3 ball game. And Paige Evans, assistant coach for Decora, will come out and talk to Vandercroll and Hoime. 
for McDonough. That's RBI number three on the season. Couple of errors in the frame for Decora has opened up the big inning for Owine. Decora four and Owine three. And the tying run will be at first base for Decora. Amber Rosensteel will be the batter in the pinch runner at first base for Owine will be Kate DeHaven. She will run for Mary McDonough. DeHaven, another eighth grader for the Huskies. So Rosensteel will bunt, pitch taken low. DeHaven takes off, but caroms away from Hoymey. DeHaven will stay put at second base. And it'll be a 1-0 count on Amber Rosensteel, who grounded to short in the second. And reached on an infield hit in the fourth. One zero. Pitch taken low to Haven. Takes off and she hesitates, but eventually makes it through to third base. Ball got away from Hoymey briefly in the Haven. Stopped halfway between first and third. The assistant coach for Owine kind of winched over here at uh, first base, but eventually she, she made it through. So the tying run 60 feet down the line. The pitch a strike to Amber Rosensteel. And it's two balls and one strike. 2-1. Inside for three balls and one strike. We do see Ellie Shelton warming up in the bullpen. Three-one swung on, popped up right side. Maria Hoimi at second base is under it, and she will make the catch to retire the side. But Owine gets three unearned runs back on two hits, two errors, and one left. We head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. It is Owine trailing Decora by a 4-3 margin. <laughs> bottom of the fifth inning we go. It's a 4-3 lead now for Decora. Decora with four in the fourth inning, but the Huskies come back with three two-out unearned runs in the fifth inning. Decora gave them five outs, and the Huskies took advantage of it. Cassie Hoimey was the only Decora hit or not to bat in that fourth inning. Hoimey swings and misses at the first one from Rosensteel. No balls, one strike. Hoimey has struck out twice against Rosensteel, once in the second, once in the third. 0-1 delivery, swing and a miss. It's nothing in two. Rosensteel with five strikeouts. And two walks, she's given up four runs. Three of them have been earned in seven hits thus far. Pitch swung on and missed. A good morning, good afternoon, and good night as Hoimey strikes out for the third time tonight. One down here in the fifth inning for Jenna Iverson. A single to left in the second, a foul out to first in the fourth. A four to three lead for DeCorey, here's ground ball towards second to her right as Lawless. She can't make the play, so Iverson will have a one-out single here in the fifth inning. A one-out single in the fourth led to four runs scoring for Decora. One on, one out. Maddie Eady will be the batter. Infield hit in the second, single to center, and scored in the fourth. Maddie swings and fouls one at the plate, or actually she totally missed the ball as the pitch was just in the dirt. It's no balls, one strike. That 
I didn't see the arms up. Just saw the swing signal from Kerry Griffith. Pitch goes low. It's one ball, one strike. Iverson, the runner at first. Takora leading 4-3 here in the fifth inning of a competitive game number one here tonight. 1-1. One, one. Check swing and a ground ball to the first base side. Bergen will field and run to the bag to retire Edie with Iverson moving up to second on the play. She'll be there with two down. Two down, a runner at second for Leighton Edie. Popped a second in the second, walked and scored in the fourth. Pitch low, one ball, no strikes. Cora was 0 for their first six with runners in scoring position. They have gotten their last hits in their last two at bats, swinging a foul back off the bat of Leighton. It is one ball, one strike. One one. High for two balls, one strike. Pitch, swing, and a foul back. It's two balls, two strikes. So the deuce is wild on the Decora. Designated player. Two balls, two strikes, and the pitch. Well high. Three and two. Iverson, the runner at second with two down. The three, two coming from Rosensteel. Here it is, swung on, popped up, left center field. Dayton coming over, and she will make the catch slightly colliding with Michaela Rayel out in left center field. Neither player injured, fortunately, but the Husky center fielder ends the threat with a fly out to center. One hit, one left. We head to the bottom half, or the top half of the sixth inning, rather. It's a lead of 4-3 for Decorah. Top of the sixth inning, a 4-3 lead for Decorah here in game one of this doubleheader tonight. Bottom third of the order due for the Huskies. Decorah with four runs in the fourth inning. Riley Hupka with an RBI single. Wild pitch scores the second run. Hupka scores on a butt by Olinger for the third run. And through a wild sequence of events, off that 20-foot bunt, Olinger runs a total of 240 feet to score. Huskies came back with three runs, all unearned, all with two outs in the top of the fifth. Nicole Bergen will lead things off here in the top of the sixth inning. Bergen fouled at the catcher in the second and walked in the fourth. And the pitch in there for a strike. It is nothing in a one. Amanda Kroll has not given up an earned run yet. Four hits. She's walked two. She struck out two. Pitch blown outside. One ball, one strike. Cora has committed three errors behind her. And two of them in that fifth inning both led to all three runs, pitch outside, or inside rather, two balls, one strike on Bergen. Rael and Adams do here in the sixth inning. Two-two, will number up the first base side foul, so now it's two and two actually. Nobody on, nobody out here in the sixth. 
2-2, swung on, driven towards center field, but it's caught there by Chelsea Twaite, who had her played perfectly. And there is one down here in the sixth inning. Bergen flies to center, one down, nobody on, and Michaela Rael, the batter for Owain. Rael grounded to second in the first, fly to left in the fourth. First pitch, swing, and a pop-up foul straight back and out of play. No balls, one strike. <laughs> 01 in there for a strike at the knees, and it's no balls, two strikes now on Rayel. O2 ground ball towards third gobble up there by Iverson throws on to first base to get Rayel by a step and there is two down here in the sixth inning as the Sun back in full force finally winning the vicious peekaboo battle with the clouds and Kennedy Adams will stand in with two down nobody on here in the sixth inning of a 4-3 to Cora lead Adams 0 for two she look at a strike, nothing and one, grounded to short in the third and struck out swinging in the fifth. Decora four in the fourth, O-line three in the fifth. O-1 delivery, pitch taken low, it is one ball, one strike. Vander Kroll has had two, one, two, three innings in her first five. One and one. Ground ball towards third and foul. So it is one ball and two strikes. Vandercroll ready, the one two delivery. Drops in low. It is two balls, two strikes to count. Deuce is wild on the number nine hitter in the O-line lineup. Decora leading 4-3 here in the sixth. Vandercroll ready, 2-2 offering. Swing and a miss. Good movement on the 2-2 offering from Vandercroll. And three up, three down here in the sixth inning. We head to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Decora will look for, for some insurance. They lead it by a 4-3 margin. Bottom of the sixth inning. Decora leading by a 4-3 margin. A four spot in the fourth for Decora. A three spot in the fifth for Owine. That has been the runs to this point. 9-1-2 and two for Decora looking for some insurance. Here in the sixth. Hupka struck out swinging in the second. Singled to left, knocked in a run, scored herself in the four-run fourth. That was her first RBI of the... season. Hupka swings the first one, pops one up, third base side over is the catcher, McMillan. She yields to the third baseman, Kolb, and Kolb... Fails to make the play, so new life. For Hubkin, no balls, one strike. Top of the order, and Olinger on deck. Pitch outside. One ball, one strike to count. The Huskies will have their top of the order. That was the part of the order that gave them the three-run rally last time through the order. 1-1, one, one, sails high for two balls, one strike. Nobody on, nobody out here in the sixth. One more to go tonight. 
And the 2-1 swung on and a pop-up straight back. McMillan will take a peek, but it's over the backstop and out of play. So two balls, two strikes to count. The clouds have gone away. The sunshine back in full force. Here at the Vikings softball diamond. 2-2 delivery, low for three balls and two strikes. With a wind stop of the order coming up, sure be nice to, for Decora to get an insurance run or two to breathe a little easier coming to the top of the seventh. Rosen Steel ready, 3-2 ground ball towards third. Call will pick it up and throw on to first base in Bergen to retire Hupka. One down here in the sixth inning. And the batter will be Tess Olinger. Struck out, reached on an error in the first, popped a second in the third, and singled. Got a run home, scored herself through a wild sequence of events. Is that one popped towards short? And a diving attempt is made. The catch is made at shortstop by Amber Rosensteel. A backhand catch moving to her left from her shortstop position for the second out. So two down. And the batter will be Peyton Jurlett. 4 3 to Cora here in the sixth. Jurlett a sacrifice in the first, a single in the third, a ground out in the fourth. The pitch taken low. One ball, no strike. So Peyton officially one for two. Oh, one. A little bit low, one ball, or two balls, no strikes now. Rosen Steel ready, 2-0, taking low, it is three balls, no strikes. And the Huskies will have the top of the order coming up in the top of the seventh inning. Rio taking all the way is Jurlid, and it's three and one. Rosen Steel yet to have a one, two, three inning in this game. One, three, one delivery high and tight for ball four. That is the third walk for. Rosensteel as Jurlett at first with two down. And Maria Hoime will bat in a Decora 4-3 lead here in the sixth inning. Pitch taken low outside. Snap throw to first base back to the bag. Diving is Peyton Jurlett. It is one ball, no strikes. Maria Hoime struck out looking in the first, walked in the third, and got an infield hit. In the fourth inning, pitch a little bit low. It is two balls, no strike snap. Two oh, high runner goes throw down to second base, gets through and into center field. Backing up the play is Kimber Dayton, so Jurlid will stay put. At second base, it's now a three ball, no strike count on Maria Hoime. Three oh, at the letters and for a strike, it is three and one. Chelsea Twait, the batter on deck. Hoime, the team leader in RBI. The pitch swung on, smacked into right center field, but right at Mary McDonough, but she misplays it and goes all the way to the fence. Jurlid will score easily. To third is Maria Hoime, and it is a 5-3 lead for Decora. McDonough did not touch that ball out in right field, so you got to give Hoime a triple there, but... McDonough misjudged it. 
and allowed the ball to go all the way to the fence. So DeCora with a little more of a cushion to go to the seventh. That's the first two-out run they have gotten tonight. And the pitch inside, one ball, no strikes to Chelsea Twait. Twait 0 for 3, struck out swinging in the first, popped to short in the third, and grounded to short in the fourth. 1-0, swung on, popped up on the infield. Calling at second is Lawless. Yields at the last second to Amber Rosensteel at short. Rosensteel makes the catch to retire the side. But the Vikes get an insurance run on one hit and one left. We head to the top half of the seventh inning. DeCora will try to close it out. They lead it 5-3. Top of the seventh inning we go. It is a four or now a five to three lead. For Decora. Nine hits for Decora, four for Owine. Decora has committed three errors, and Owine has committed four errors. It'll be the top of the order for Owine here in the seventh. This was the top of the order, or the part of the order that. Got the three-run rally as Kimber Dayton bunts up the third base side, and it's a fair ball, and Dayton will be the safe at first base. Kerry Griffith is asking whether that ball was touched or not. He ruled that one a fair ball. Hoimi dove after it, didn't get there, and... Griffith ruled it was touched. He's going to ask the base umpire, Randy Morris, but this is going to be a tough uh, one to overturn. And I don't think that is going to happen as Kimber Dayton gets a bunt single to start things here in the seventh inning. And Dayton will be at first base with nobody out. Controversy to start the seventh inning. Caddy called to the plate, grounded to short in the first, grounded to second in the third. Here's a bunt right in front of the plate. Hoimi will pick it up, throw to first base, gets the out there. Nobody's covering third. Here's a return throw to third from Olinger and in there safely is Dayton. So a sacrifice complete from Hoimi to Olinger, two to three, and Dayton moves up two bases on the sacrifice. So a runner at third and one down, and Natalie McMillan will be the batter. McMillan struck out swinging in the first, grounded to short in the fourth, reached on an error and scored in the fifth. And the pitch hit her. First hit batter of the night either way. McMillan hit by a pitch, so the go-ahead run, or correction, the tying run is at first base, and go-ahead run coming to the plate in the person, person of Ashley Rosensteel. Rosensteel doubled in the second, flew out to center in the fourth, and Knocked in a run with a single to left and scored herself in the fifth. So the Huskies with a rally here in the seventh inning. And Paige Evans, assistant coach for the court, out to talk to the infield and battery. Runners at the corners, one down. 5-3 lead for Decora here in the seventh, and Ashley Rosensteel is two for three. Pitch taken low. It gets through the legs of Hoimi. It hit the umpire, Kerry Griffith, and moving up to second base is McMillan on the wild pitch. One ball, no strikes. So now the tying run in scoring position for Owine. 
One ball, no strikes the count. And that one rolled in there. It got by Hoimi down the line from third comes Dayton. She will score. It's now a 5-4 ball game. And now the tying run is at third base for the Huskies. The other night in game, one of the doubleheader to Cora. Gave up a 2-0 lead in the seventh inning and gave up a 3-2 lead in the eighth inning. They're trying to put this one away as the pitch goes outside. It is three balls, no strikes on Ashley Rosensteel. rolled in there for ball four. So now the go-ahead run on base for Decora. We do notice Ellie Shelton is warming up in the bullpen for Decora. Whether that's for perhaps relief duty in this game or warming up for the next game, we're not sure. But first and third was one down. And Mary McDonough will be the batter. And the pitch inside corner for a strike, nothing and one. Taking second uncontested is Ashley Rosensteel. So now the tying run is at third. The go-ahead run at second base. 0-1, ground ball towards second. Hoimi will pick it up. One out recorded at first base. Scoring on the play is McMillan. It is now a 5-5 five five ball game as McDonough gets her second RBI of the night. Scoring McMillan on the ground ball. Ashley Rosensteel will be at third, and Amber Rosensteel will try to get her home. Amber grounded to short in the second. Infield hit in the fourth, pop to the pitcher in the fifth. Pitch swung on and a ground ball foul up the third base side. It is no balls and one strike. So there will be a bottom of the seventh inning. After the Huskies rally for two here in the top of the seventh. 0-1 delivery, ground ball to the left side, charge there by Jurlich. She boots it, Amber going to reach, Ashley will score, and the Huskies have taken a 6-5 lead. A three spot here in the seventh inning for Decora. And Nicole Bergen will be the batter. A three spot for the Huskies. It is O-line six and Decora five. As the pitch in there for a strike, nothing and one. Bergen. Fouled to the catcher in the second, walked in the fourth, and flew out to center in the sixth. 0-1 delivery, ground ball to the left side, gets by Iverson, picked up by Jurley, throw was on to first base. Olinger can't handle the throw, moving up to third on the play is Amber Rosensteel. Bergen beat the throw nonetheless, so it'll be an infield hit for Bergen, and runners at first and third for the Huskies. And Michaela Rael will be the eighth batter of the inning. First and third with two down, three in for the Huskies. A 6-5 O-line lead, and Rael swings and fouls the pitch back. No balls, one strike. Rael grounded to second in the second, flew out to left in the fourth, and grounded to third in the sixth. Vikes will have five, six, and seven due in the seventh inning. Cassie Hoime, Jenna Iverson, Maddie Eady, if anyone gets on late and Eady. And an offensive timeout asked for by Barb Bennett to talk to Michaela Riel here. Hawaiian with three in the fifth inning. And three here in the seventh inning. They've scored four of their six runs with two outs.
Rael squares to bunt, takes the pitch inside. It is one ball all and one strike. And taking second on defensive indifference is Bergen. So a couple more runs in scoring position. 1-1 one, one swung on, a fly ball into center field. It'll land in front of Twait for a base hit. Rosensteel will score. Bergen to the plate. The throw is offline. Two more runs will score. And now trying to make third base on the plate is Rayel. And the return throw from Hoime to Iverson is in time. Rayel with a two-run single. So it ends up being a five spot here in the seventh inning. It'll be 8-5 O-Wine. So, five runs on three hits, one error, and one left. Decora needs three to keep this baby going. They trail it by an eight to five margin. Oh, why eight? Decora five as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Huskies with a five spot in the seventh inning. So for the second time in thir three games, Decora had a lead in the seventh inning and unfortunately couldn't hold it. Cassie Hoime will start things and she's had a tough night swinging and missing. It is no balls, one strike. She struck out swinging the second, the third, and the fifth. The 0-1 delivery, Hoyme bunts and bunts foul. It is no balls, two strikes. You can talk about a meltdown in that uh, seventh inning, but you also got to look at other opportunities that Decor has had throughout the night. They have left eight runners on in six innings. Had opportunities earlier, but couldn't do it. Swing and a miss, and Hoyme strikes out for the fourth time tonight, and there's one down here in the seventh inning. One down, nobody on for Jen Iverson. 8-5-0 wine here in the seventh. Iverson looks at the first one inside from Rosensteel. One ball, no strikes. Rosensteel and O'Wine trying to pick up their first win of the season. 1-0 delivery swing and a foul back. It is one ball, one strike. Decora led 4-0 after 4 O'Wine with three in the fifth. Decora with one in the sixth. It was 5-3 going to the eighth, but the Huskies score five runs. Three of them with two outs. Pitch inside corner for a strike, and it's one and two. Six of the eight runs the Huskies have scored have come with two outs. One, two, sails high for two balls, two strikes. Bikes need two runners on to get the tying run to the plate. Two-two. Check swing. Did she go? No. With a left hand hit her up. Hard to appeal to that first base umpire. Three balls, two strikes with one down. 3-2, sails high for ball four. So Iverson on for the third time in game one. Runner at first, one down. Offensive timeout for Terry Olsen as I believe she will go with a pinch runner in this situation. It looks like Lauren Eggert will be the runner at first. Lauren Eggert will run at first base for Jenna Iverson. His pitch in there for a strike and a snap throw to first base and back to the bag standing is Eggert. No balls, one strike. Matty Eady, infield hit in the second, singled and scored in the fourth, grounded to first in the fifth. The pitch goes high, it is one ball, one strike. Yeah. 
Runner at first, one down, seventh inning, O-line leading 8-5. to 1-1 one, one delivery, swung on a fly ball into right. McDonough after it. She can't get there, and it's going to go all the way to the fence. Eggert will reach second base and go to third. Sliding at second with a double is Maddie Eady. And it'll be second and third with one down as Eady a little shaken up on the slide that time. Second and third with... One down, and Leighton Eady will be the batter. Coach, head coach Terry Olson, assistant coach Miranda McKay, and now trainer Kelly Rueckert out to assess the situation. And Maddie waves everybody off. She's going to be all right. Second and third with one down. Now the tying run at the plate for Decora. Late Needy will be the batter. Popped a second in the second, walked and scored in the fourth, flew out to center in the fifth. First pitch, a strike at the knees, and it's no, nothing and one. Oh, one delivery, sails high, caroms off the glove of McMillan, down the line from third comes Eggert, throw to the plate, and Eggert is safe. And it is an 8-6 ball game as Maddie Eady scores on the play. Barb Bennett out to talk to Ashley Rosensteel, who argued with Carrie Griffith on the call and said she never reached the base. But Griff was right there and threw the arms out and gave the safe signal. So, 8-6. And a one ball, one strike count on Leighton Eady. Leighton still representing the tying run. Run number seven, 60 feet down the line at third for Decora in the person of Matt Eady. 1-1, one, one, swung on, smack toward short and into left for a base hit. Leighton Eady brings Matt Eady home. It is an eight to seven ball game. Now the tying run on base for Decora. Okay. Riley Hubka will be the batter. She smacks one up the middle and a base hit. With the play in front of her, Late Needy will put the brakes on at second base and now Decora with the winning run on base and the top of the order coming up in the person of Tess Olinger. It's 8-7 O-Wine. O-Wine scored five in the top of the seventh to take an 8-5 lead. Decora has responded with two here in the seventh inning. Tying run at second, winning run at first. Olinger swinging and missing on a fastball from Rosensteel. It's nothing in one. Olinger struck out, reached on an error, popped to second in the third, singled and scored in the fourth, popped to short in the sixth. That one caroms off the glove of McMillan, so moving up to third is late needy. Moving to second is Riley Hupka, winning run now in scoring position for Decora. One ball, one strike. One one, high, two balls, one strike count. Two one, ground ball, left side. Rosenseal gonna go to the plate, not in time. Late Needy scores the tying run. Olinger will end up at second base. And it is an 8-8 ball game. Olinger reaches on the fielder's choice. Rosensteel came home, but the throw was too high for the catcher, McMillan. It got away from her, but not enough for Riley Hubka to advance. Olinger with the heads-up play taking second base and taking a force out away at second. 
And Peyton Jurlid will be the batter. Second and third. One down, seventh inning, 8-8 eight, eight game. Pitch to Peyton. Goes low for one ball, no strikes. Peyton sacrificing the first single in the third. Grounded out to third in the fourth. Walked and scored in the sixth. one -oh. Popped up left side. That one is going to land fair and into foul territory. Rosenstiel going to throw to the plate. Not in time, and Decora wins it. O-line scores five in the seventh inning to take an 8-5 lead, but a bloop single by Peyton Jurlid here in the seventh inning caps off a four-run rally for Decora, and they win it by a 9-8 margin. Nine runs on 12 hits, four errors, and 10 left for Decora. Eight runs on seven hits, four errors, and seven left for Owine. Annika Vandercroll, the winning pitcher, she's now one and two. And Ashley Rosensteel, the losing pitcher, she is now 0 and six. So Decora wins game one of the doubleheader, nine to six. Back in about 20 for game two of the doubleheader on Vikings Radio 1240 KDEC. 